Hello and welcome to uh, Kaiser Redux. Today we're playing as the best country in Kaiser Redux. You all know it. Uh, Mongolia under Roman von Ergen Sternberg. And I am your one and only host, uh, Mount Crusade. And if you'd mind before you watch the video, subscribe and see more content like this. I mean a lot. So now we're going to start with the Russians aren't watching. And uh, that one on guns. And the construction one, and basic machine tools. The history of Mongolia. Mongolia was under the control of the Manchu Qing Dynasty for centuries, until 1911 in the Xinhai Rebellion, which led to Mongolian independence under the eighth uh, funny Mongol Buddhist man, the head of the Mongolian Buddhist of Mongolian Buddhism, who took the title of Bagad Khan. China still claimed Mongolia as Chinese territory. And Mongolia's independence was Shattered in 1919 when Zhejiang, a Chinese warlord of the Enhui clique, occupied the country. However, in 1920, Roman von Ruck Sternberg, a white Russian military general leading his Asiatic Cavalry Division, took Urga from the Chinese and was restored the Bagad Khan. Ergen enforced the rule of the Khan with an iron fist, crushing revolts and dissidents while making a deals with the aristocratic Mongol princes. The Mongol Arden Nam, a socialist party inspired by the Bolsheviks, was formed and began a revolution in 1921 to overthrow Ergen's regime. Due to the lack of foreign support, the revolution failed, and the men were forced to go into hiding. Following the near-death and temporary coma of the Bagad Khan in 1924 due to his poor health, possible food failed poisoning attempt, by Arden Nam agents, the the man rebelled again, claiming that Ergen was no longer held held any legitimacy in the co country as his liege. This revolution was harshly repressed, and multiple senior members of the man, including their leader Damdin Sukabartar, were executed in enforcing the forcing the shattered man rem remnants to go into hiding once more. In this time, Ergen made deals with the Russian government for economic and military support. They were also, and his forces were also able to seize Xinghol from the Chinese Guimingjin. Ergen's rule was a bit shaky, however, in uh, following a series of peasants' uprisings in 1930, led primarily by Buddhist lamas and nomadic patriot Gada Mirin. Ergen purged many high ranking lamas in his government destroying m much of the support he uh, had occurred over years. With the Bagad Khan's ever-failing health and Ergen's ever-rising ambitions for the future, of Mo the future of Mongolia is uncertain, especially as old foes and new enemies begin to stir once more. What about now? In 1936, Ergen's rule remains under threat. There are four main cliques that dominate Mongolian political society. The Roiskia Yuvanitsky Halikya are a clique of white Russian officers under the leadership of of Ergen Sternberg. They focus on the cooperation of mil Russian military strength and anti socialism. They are currently they currently lead the country working with the I don't know how to pronounce that. So the Mongol ones and the Buddhist ones. The Mongol ones in the name of the hierarchy of Mongolian prince is the name of the hierarchy of Mongol princes and nobles who have been the ruling class of the country for centuries, focusing on keeping their wealth and power secure. They are largely led by inner Mongolian prince Dim Chungdungrub, who leads a domineering and ambitious group of inner Mongol princes around the region of Zhingul. The Buddhist ones are a council of high ranking Buddhist lamas. Tulkas and monks in Mongolia, which was formed following Ergen's purge of lamas in 1930. However, many members are fanatic Buddhists who wish to turn Mongolia into a truly theocratic society under the Bagad Khan. They are led by the seventh Chinkya, a high ranking lama from Inner Mongolia. The Mongolian Ardennam, a socialist party which rebelled in 19 1921 and 20 
1924 remain in hiding but are still a strong force to be reckoned with. Led by Solin Dazen and receiving aid from other Mongolian democratic parties and even the famed Gada Mat Marin, they, are, they have taken some inspiration by, from Russia and Chinese communist regimes that, and therefore have begun advocating for multi-party democracy under their control. Aside from these parties and main cliques, the bandit lord and warrior Tulkaya Lama rules from his bandit fortress in Kilvid, seeking to restore ancient glories and vengeance against Chinese. Foreigners besiege our Khanate as well. As for the Soimboy Soim Soim Revival Society has once again begun to rise in national provinces, advocating for the transformation of Mongolia into a Russian colonial satellite. Their position comes from the comes from in form in the form of the Afu Club remnants of the disgraced Anhui clique. They fled to Mongolia following the disastrous northern expedition and now seek to use Mongolia as a launching point of their crusade to Beijing. As if our inner politics could not get any more hect hectic, Mongolia also faces many external threats. For many years, border skirmishes have taken place between the Muslim Chinese Maklik and Mongolian troops across the border. A similar situation is taking place in the Zhengjia region of the Xinhai Klik. This main point of tension is the province of Yushu, which has swapped hands between Tibet and the Maklik in over the past few years. The province is is a powder keg, keg waiting to explode, and it, when it does, the opportunity to unite Mongolian people cannot be ignored. Mongolia sits on the edge of an uncertain future, and it is up to the Mad Baron to steer this unse unsteady ship into the right direction, lest the whole rotten structure collapse and, vary, and the various internal forces that assailed his regime tear the nation apart. Glory to Mongolia. Yeah, let's... Let's choose him. The Russians aren't watching. An awful event has occurred. President Kerensky, who was able to keep the Russian Republic from open rebellion for decades, has been killed during his presidency. We were able to broker many economic and military deals, allowing our extremely re weak economy to grow. Although President Kerensky didn't allow the House of Romanov to rightfully retake their throne, he was still better than the Reds and hopefully allowed our relationship to grow strong. However, everything has been brought to question. All sign of civility that Kerensky once brought to Russian politics was lost to the moment that the bullet struck his body. With many trying to fill the power vacuum, Kerensky has left. It, it seems we have been forgotten. There are warning signs that we might lose Russian support that our nation has become dependent on. Their existence is vital. Now, now what we should do is take advantage of the four civilian factories we have open. Economic and military assistance has, from Russia has been temporarily halted. What we have feared to come true, we have received the word from the Russian administration that they decided to temporarily end their military and economic aid to our nation. Without it, we will only stu suffer. But, yeah, so what I think we should do, while we have the time, ha have those factories free, is buy some rifles to armed divisions. Charge against Roman von Ergen Sternberg. Now, this is one we're... Okay, pause if you want to read this. It just talks about... I. But what we're going to do is we want... We want him to go fucking nuts. So what we're going to do is pick... Ergen Sternberg was struck by a stray, a stray arrow, but he managed to reach his horse and escape to Erga. The mad baron grows madder, perhaps mad enough to forge a new empire. And see this? A baron dies in a con, but a con is reborn. Urga is in chaos, and the baron is in a coma. The soul of Mongolia doesn't know what will happen next. Various forces and factions within our continent now seek to tear apart everything. Urgan Sternberg and the Bagi Khan have work to achieve. In a yurt in the center of the city, the mad baron now lies unconscious, writhing in agony and muttering gibberish. As a heavy fever claims its body in delirium and delusions, seize his mind. As the world rages around him, Ergen Sternberg was locked away in a vault of his own mind, and obvious, oblivious to the numerous aids and attendants that worked without end to revive their dying patriarch. 
Roman's mind was alight with fantastical visions, near prophetic glimpses of pure nirvana. His uh, psyching soul reaching out into the cosmic expanse and seemingly communicate communing with the the very essence of the universe itself. Through it, it through it is just likely that these visions have less to do with divine intervention and more to do with the last functioning, the last of the barons functioning brain slowly suffocating and decaying away as the voices ceased the cacophony uh, that the stormed within his mind subsided and in, in a sudden instant the eyes of the calm bolted open once more with life now bloodshot and wild eyed like never before without hesitation or warning the con let out a primordial scream that shook the heavens and nearly deafened those in their ear with him who were tending to his wounds, before finally uttering one complete phrase, The world shall tremble in fear, for now I am Makala, destroyer of the words. Now he should get a new portrait. Yep, boom, now the Russians aren't watching his done. Only a few days have passed. I think it was more like a few months. Only a few days have passed since uh, assassinating Kerensky. Kerensky and Russia is still trying to regroup and reorganize. They would be busy with their own affairs. Chinese be damned. Unification for all Mongols. <laughs> no, we're going to do God of War first because we can get military factories so we aren't having to be reliant on. Why, Ergen's purge in the past few months has become that the Baron's role is, con is constantly in danger. Therefore, he has declared time to examine our current military staff and uh, decide whether they're loyal to Ergen. Or whether it is time they saw a bolt. We must root out the traitors. I am Roman von Ergen Sternberg. And I say. Uh, I'll tell you what. We need to root out these damn traitors. Where's well, all right. We are going to build a wall. See this. This is the wall we're working on. We're going to. We're going to. Make a border wall against Chinese. And these guys too. Why? Because I don't like his hat. Status of Mongolian one. Mongolian one has fought on the side for Mongolia for for decades, taking part in the independence of Mongolia back in 1911. Though it can be open with dialogue between the man rebels at times. He was uh, he was arrested and almost died in his cell. Yeah, we're just gonna shoot him because it just means he's not there no more. Yeah, end him. We can't risk the stability we already have. Be good to get civilian factories so we can do more trade. Ooh, time to buy more rifles. <laughs> okay, so now we're paternal autocrats. Draw from the plunder pile and pay every prince you can find. Boyger makes his choice. And let it. Boyger, do it. Oh. Oh, it worked. Oh, it worked. Uh. Yeah, let's start researching. Let's start on that because we'll we need that. Nine Eleven. George Bush. I think he did that. Yeah, he did that. <laughs> After we get this, it'd probably be best to start on the Mongolian uh, Air Force. Yeah, what are they gonna do? They are not. They are not capable. Of stopping me because I'm Roman Ergen McSternberg. What are they gonna do? Tell me, quit being Ergen McSternberg. Rip Hammy, you taste well.
Oh, and boom, they're gone because they only have that one point. And I, and I take that because I can and because I'm motherfucking uh, Genghis Khan. What are you going to do? I'm Genghis Khan. <laughs> I ride the horse. Yeah, I, you heard me right. I ride the horse. I'll be riding horse. I'm a, I'm I'm so great at this game. They should make me the the military head of the Mongolian military simply because I'm good at this game. It works for Russia, like man. Look at Grisha right now. He has it good. They're getting close. I will mongol. You heard me right. I am mongling so damn hard right now. They should call me the Mongoloid. go usually I can do that a bit better but but damn loot the salt in the earth and uh, Very lame. Okay. We take half them. We stick half them down here. And then we take the rest. Put them down there. You know, the only thing I'm worrying about is... Mm, we should... Okay. So... Better... Yeah. Oh, yeah.
So now, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, and now, send an ultimatum. <laughs> Oh, and you see, there, there is Turkmenistan goes. I think I'm the only legitimate Chinese power. Look, I am the biggest. You could fit all the other ones combined into me. Oh, actually, we should uh, cancel that. Just go ahead and do Emperor of the Mongols since Alash Autonomy is... Oh, they're part of the Mongol Accord. But we can conquer T Turkmenistan at least. <laughs> And at least have half a Kazakhstan. Mongolia will rise under Ergen Khan. Can't risk a line. Charge! Over here you have Liberia, land of liberty, down to land of the president of men. We'll lead the way to war brain, they say the nation's free. Bam, bam, bam. That's what they have. Ah, uh, ew. They should put Mussolini in charge. Totally not, because I've played as Mussolini in that path. And totally not, because I just played as Bird Mussolini in, uh, in Equestria at War. Okay, and we're gonna put him under. No, not him. Under myself. <laughs> okay. In democracy, mm -hmm. pioneers seeking liberty, they called it Liberia and the liberty. Da, 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 da. Stur Sternberg declares himself the rest reincarnation of Genghis Khan. Roman von Erkin Sternberg has proved himself to be the savior of Mongolia, securing his defiant sovereignty amongst the surrounding conflicts in Russia and China. The Mad Baron has personally blessed by has been personally blessed by the. Bagid Khan proven his actions as sinned by the majority of mortals. Sternberg is thought to, by many Mongolians to be the avatar of the god of war, and by his most loyal supporters, a reincarnation of the great Genghis Khan. His victories ha over his opposition have only further solidified these beliefs. Now his position is supreme power. The Mad Baron has once again sent shockwaves across the region, addressing the masses in it. In the fortified capital of Ur Urga, Sternberg declared himself indeed the rest or the reincarnation of Genghis Khan, proclaiming himself as the spiritual continuation of the immortal emperor of all Mongols. The earth shall tremble under the under the trample of the Khan. Hmm. Look at that name. Now we're the great. No. No. And boom! There we get. It's a super event. The Mongol horde rides once more. What was, what was once both the greatest land entity and the scourge of the world, the Mongol Empire has been re resurrected by Roman von Ergen Sternberg, having solidified his position and creating, created by his Asiatic cavalry division. The Baltic German noble declared himself Genghis Khan II, claiming to be the mantle of the universal ruler previously held by Timujin centuries ago.
with the fearsome reputation of the bloody baron the entire world may soon find itself bathed in crimson let let blue heaven encompasses all quote of the day my name is surrounded by such hate and fear that no one can judge what is the truth and what is false what is history and what is myth roman von ergen sternberg oh and look at that new portrait for genghis khan the second yeah now we're doing real mongol warlord gaming actually we don't need modern military doctrine just take half put him over here the other half put him over here all right and now we're about to turn on the bet Boom, there we have Tibet. Now we have Big Mongolia. Okay, so I I just... Okay, we're gonna save because we're supposed just to uh, get a war goal. All right. I think that's where we're going to end it off here for now. All right, see you next time. I like elephants and God likes elephants.